Welcome back to another day of Sweat Your Ass Off with Busted Knuckle by Diesel Doctor himself. So today, we got some work to do. So quit looking at this handsome face and let's see what we're getting in. Hope you got yourself some energy, you're gonna need it. Today's code we're going over, 521-027 FMI9, EGR valve actuator no longer communicating. So something's going on with the EGR valve actuator itself. Not the valve, but the actuator. The actuator is not communicating properly, either internal uh, malfunction to where it's not sending signals back or the wiring is screwed up. So we're gonna figure out what the problem is here. So step one, are there any battery voltage codes? Yes or no, depending on your situation. For me, it's no. Check for multiple EGR fault codes. There were no other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and go to step three. Turn ignition off, not a problem. Went ahead and did that, I should get paid extra for that. All right, disconnect and inspect the EGR valve actuator electrical connector components. Are there any damage? All right, so EGR valve actuator, that little guy in the back right there. Yep, way back, oh, nice and rusty too. Lucky me, huh? All right, so if you follow the harness, it's that little guy right there, and it goes right there. Take a little look, see? See that lion face right there? He's angry. All right. So here's the connector. See if I can unblur it. Oh, there we go. No damaged pins. Uh, where is it right there? All right. No corrosion, no contamination. Let's see if I can unblur it for you. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Damn, look at this new camera. I'm impressed. All right. No issues whatsoever and no spread pins. All right. So now we can start taking some readings. All right. Disconnected the connectors and no damage. Go to step five. Inspect the electrical connector. Uh, engine hard aside, any spread pins? No. All right, turn the key on. And measure voltage between pins one and two. All right, key on. Beautiful wall charts. All right, so right here I got my Fluke True RMS meter. Highly suggested with an amp clamp, of course. All right, 12.3 volts. As you can see, I'm plumbed into pins one and two on my engine harness side connector. Obviously, if I was on the EGR valve actuator side of the connector, I would not be getting any readings. I gotta state this because uh, I've been asked quite a few times before, why aren't I on the other side? Well, there's the power, there's none. Pretty obvious, right? Cool, plumbed in, 12 volts. What's the next step? All right, all right. Was the voltage greater than 11 volts? Yes, go to step number nine. Ignition off and measure resistance between pins three and four. Like a Blair Witch. All right, let me swap those pins over real quick. Okay, went ahead and swapped the pins to the last two, pins three and four. Let's see what we got. We are checking resistance on the data link right now, and we're 60 ohms. That is perfect. I wonder, what is it gonna have us do next? Checking resistance, 60 ohms, beautiful. Replace the EGR valve actuator. If we did not have 60 ohms, obviously we would have a wiring issue between the motor control module and the EGR valve actuator. So we would have something going on uh, with a screwed up MCM or the engine sensor harness itself. So that would be checking all this, uh, the next steps. But since we have 60 ohms and that's exactly where we want to be at all times on the data link, then we know the EGR valve actuator is having an internal mechanical problem where it can't send any uh, messages correctly. So replace the EGR valve actuator. Let's see what's involved. All right, you already know that bumper has got to come off. The coolant has to be drained, right? I'm going to take off the two shields. And then, let's get some light over here for you guys. Not exactly a fun job. It's hard to get to. All right, that linkage arm has to come off right there. There's a couple of coolant lines on the bottom right there, if you can see that. Uh, those coolant lines have to come off. And then there are, I believe, three bolts. Uh, three mounting bolts holding that EGR valve actuator in place. 
uh, with spacers on them too. So don't drop those spacers. You're gonna need them again. All right, and that's it. So we got those cool lines, the uh, arm, the pull rod, and uh, the mounting bolts, that's it. Now, since I got you guys all excited, because we're about to get this actuator going on, we got a couple minutes right here. I want to go ahead and let you know, we got a word from our sponsor right now. It is not Ghost Energy. It is That's a Wrap AZ in Avondale, Arizona. If you need a custom wrap done, this guy knows his stuff. He's He does high-end cars. He does piece of junk cars. It doesn't matter what you got a lawnmower, you can take it to him. You got a little Tonka truck, you can take it to him. He will wrap whatever it is, high quality, at a low price, guaranteed. Hey, visit this guy out. That's a wrap, AZ. I'll try to include it right here. Hey, let's get back to work. All right, let's get to work. Now you will find on the older units, all these bolts, they're gonna be all rusted and broken off. So do what you can. All right, there's the top one, set the side. Before you take out these bottom bolts, go ahead and unwrap this wiring and this clip. Boom, that's it. That's all there is. to do this is to take off this line which is a 12 millimeter and a 9 16 right here and you can just unscrew this right you can just take off this uh, dozer fuel injector line right here and just move it out of the way so you can get this but I got a super top secret trick that I'm gonna show you right now works every time boom comes right off All right, so now you can see what we're looking at. We're gonna have to take off that nut right there. We go. Now we're in focus. We're gonna take off that nut right there. Uh, I believe it's a 13 millimeter. We'll double check that right now. But I'm gonna spray some penetrating oil on it because I know that sucker's rusted up. All right, so it looks like a 12 millimeter. I got, went ahead and got a 12 point on there. So we can try to grab it a little bit better since it's so rusted up. Let's see if it works. We can go ahead and take this arm off. Oh, maybe. All right, she's gonna fight me a little bit. Get both hands on there. Gotta be behind the turbo where it's hard to get to. So that arm attaches to the center of the exhaust manifold center section right there. And that is where the ETR valve butterfly is now. No longer over here, now it's over here, built in. So if you ever have a problem with that, you gotta replace the whole center section. All right, now that that's done, we can go ahead and take out the coolant lines and then unbolt it. All right, so under here, you are looking underneath the turbo um, exhaust pipe and at the bottom of the EGR valve actuator. As you can see, there is something we have to cut to get it out of the way, which is that that harness. Just cut that zip tie, all right, because it was tied to the line. Cool, 
get that out of the way. I believe it's a three quarter. Let's see if I'm right. Yes, it's a three quarter. All right. It's fine. kind of hard to get on over here. hands on it. Uh, it's kind of tight. All right. There's one. I'm probably blocking everything. You can't see a thing, huh? Yeah, I probably am. What a jerk. Freaking ass clown. All right. One line, two line. They're both loose. Depending on how loose, it may be a problem. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now we got three mounting bolts. All right. So everything's undone. Go ahead and loosen up these bolts. Keep in mind those spacers are gonna fall. Remember these are uh, 13 millimeter heads. stayed on what hey maybe they're built in now maybe they changed the design all right go ahead and grab it slap it tickle it around so that's it that's what we're looking at I guess these suckers are on there now. They used to just be a little spacer plates that you would add on there. They would always fall, piss you off. Oh, oh, there you go. Maybe there's a screw on type now. We'll see what the new one looks like. So the new one isn't gonna come with these fittings. So we're gonna have to take these off. I'll put them on the new one. As soon as that sucker comes in. All right, here we got a brand new servo motor, EGR actuator motor. There's a part number for you. Here's a couple of items you might need as well. I just got new fittings. I like to get new fittings every time. I don't trust those seals. Uh, this guy, the stud tends to break off, so I just order a new one every time. Got an unboxing video. I know you guys like that. And there's a new motor. Okay, what we're gonna do first? Take these bad boys off. They're the same ones on either side. So we're gonna go ahead and screw them in. Kinda hard to screw up since they're uh, different sizes. So that's not gonna work. So you know you're gonna get this one right. Got my 11 sixteenths, right? Yes, 11 sixteenths. Beautiful. How do we want to put it on? All right, so here's our uh, top plate for the actuator. The full rod plate. So we're gonna line this guy up. So it is grooved exactly where it needs to go. Let's see if you can see it splines on there. There you go, you see the flat spot? We're just going to go ahead and line that up. Okay, and it's just going to be on the opposite side of the coolant ports. So it's going to be facing backwards. You can always use the old one for reference. Take a little uh, hammer and socket. 
a little bit of magic. Make sure it's all the way on there. Got a little bit more to go. Almost perfect. And we'll just suck it down with a new nut. Always get new nuts because don't trust them. And this is what I was talking about, the spacers. So they'll just unscrew and we'll screw them onto this. spacers and put them on here. Alright. Go ahead and uh, smack it into place. I like smacking things. Makes for a good day. Alright, take it, uh, twist it out. in there maybe I mean it sounds like a good idea doesn't seem like it's gonna work though all right you gotta be good with your fingers if she says you're not you don't want to find a different career all right there's one Everything's loose. I'm gonna line up the cold lines. That way I don't have to fight them later, because you will be fighting them. You bolt it down first. Shoot, I learned my lesson a couple times. But man, what the hell was I thinking? Sometimes you just feel stupid. All right. We're out my wiring behind that cold line. Over here. Come on, you can do it. I got to play there, but it is. There it is. All right. Little circles on there. Oh, you want to take a look underneath, huh? Yeah. Oh, there you go. You can see the undercarriage. Hope you enjoy. All right. That's on there. That's on there. Now I can bolt it down. a big old extension and a wobble socket.
Yeah. All right, so I went ahead and tightened on those uh, cool ones. So now I can get that pull rod. Wherever that sucker's hiding. Where is it hiding? Sit down low. I can get the pull rod and I can go ahead and put it on. Maybe. Ah. Oh, you gotta fight me, huh? Alright, we're gonna move around and. Ooh, kinda blurry. Alright. Get a new nut and put it on there. We'll hold it and we'll tighten it down. All right, got our new nut. All right. I believe it's uh, 24 foot pounds, in case you're wondering. I'm gonna go ahead and hold it because I don't want to go in anywhere. I do want to make sure we are free and clear. Good to go. You hear that whipping back there? EGR valve. Nice and squeaky. Squeak, squeak. All right, cool. Now that that's done, we're gonna get our wiring. We're gonna get our wiring. Where you at? Where you at? Peanut butter, jelly, and baseball bat. Oh, we'll just set it up right there. We'll go ahead and uh, secure it down. We'll go ahead and connect it. All right, so if you can see that sensor, oh, come on, bad, bad angles. All right, so it's tied down, it's connected. I uh, went ahead and secured the wiring to make sure it's not just running free and flailing. Uh, actuators on there everything's bolted down the pull rods on there everything's bolted everything's looking good everything's torqued all right so now all right so we got that new servo actuator EGR actuator installed and what we need to do is we need to do a slow learn routine all right let everything load la, 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 la. all right Let's go to uh, after treatment. No, EGR, we're gonna go to EGR. We're gonna go to EGR actuator slow learn procedure. And the reason we're gonna do this is so it finds out its end stops and everything just shut down. Well, what's up with that? Oh, uh, today's gonna be one of those days, huh? It's not Monday, but it sure feels like it. All right, so keep in mind, this is not like the old school EPO7 DDs where you just turn the key on and it learns its end stops by itself. Now you actually have to go in and set them, run the procedure. Come on, come on green light, we need you. All right, actions, EGR, slow learn. All right, it's going to be okay because it still recognizes the last one. So we're gonna go ahead and start it. It's gonna do his thing, move around, sequence running, and it's okay. All right, calibration, calibration stopped, and we are good to go. We got the big green light right here. We are good. That's all it is. Go to fault codes. All right, there was our code right there. We're gonna go ahead and clear the codes and we're gonna go ahead and run a regen and find out how she does so before i do the regen i just want to double check everything make sure there's no issues i want to look at everything maybe get hands on look at the wiring make sure there's no issues whatsoever and everything is looking good i'm happy with it all right let's go run a regen find out how she does if the code comes back 
comes back active, uh, then we know we got some more issues somewhere else, possibly in the wiring. Uh, I'm pretty confident that this is the issue. Uh, I think it's how the troubleshooting went down. So let's see what it does. And I forgot to mention, go ahead and fill up the cooling system. Probably just a little important. Just taking a look at my regen. Everything is looking good. I'm not seeing any issues. I like to go over to my EGR instrumentation and take a look around and just see what kind of boost I'm getting right now. Uh, just at 1200 RPM. I wanna know what's going on with my EGR commanded value uh, compared to my desired value. And it's doing pretty well. I'm not seeing any issues. So this looks like it may be successful. Better find some wood and knock on it, right? Don't wanna jinx myself. So that's all there is to it. Regen ran successful. I also ran that SCR efficiency test just to make sure no other issues was gonna happen on that truck. So I was getting a couple different check engine lights. Um, but EGR valve actuator done, that's all there is. If you're doing it under warranty, expect to get maybe 2.5 hours uh, with the regen, some troubleshooting, broken bolts, seized up, something. Uh, nothing too crazy. But you know what? We got it done. Pretty quick, I'd say. But if you guys got any questions, let me know. I got answers for you. And if not, man, you know I'll find them because I'm going to take care of you. Keep grinding, keep hustling, and come back for more.